Hello and welcome to the screen design tutorial from the Gravit team. This tutorial will aim to introduce you to the fundamental features and tools you will need to begin screen designing with Gravit. To begin, please create a new design from the workspace and use the template for the galaxy. You can use any size you like, this is just what I'm going to be using. Firstly, I will set up the designer to be more suited for screen design. I will change the view style to output by going to the view toolbar option. Following this, I will select the snap tool on the toolbar and ensure I have turned on everything except for show grids and snap to grids. Grids can be useful, however I do not need them for this design. The important option to note that I've switched on here is snapping. This allows me to move around elements of the design and have them snap to align with other elements within the design of my choosing. This is where the further options come in. You can choose which elements you will snap to. The most important snap options for screen design are guidelines, shape boxes, canvas borders and margins. The guidelines are lines that will appear as you move items around the design, which aim to guide the placement of items. I'll go into this more shortly. Once I have my file set up, I will now move on to creating some folders for my designs. The reason for this is that I personally like to keep my screen design projects well organised. If these type of designs are organised, it makes editing and locating individual elements much easier at a later date. I'll begin creating a number of folders by selecting a folder button on the layer panel and double clicking them to give them a name. Try to give your folders meaningful names, you'll most definitely thank yourself later when you are looking back through your design. You should also notice that after you create a folder, you are also able to move folders within other folders to make them subfolders. This allows even further organisation. To begin, I'll be creating the header and footer box elements using a green that I have chosen earlier. All three of these elements will be made using the rectangle tool found in the toolbar under shape. The top element will replicate the phone information area of a phone. The next box down will be the main header area and navigation. And the bottom will replicate the bottom of any ordinary phone which will be a dark grey. Upon creation of these elements, I will move them into their appropriate layers. Before I move on to the next section, I'll be adding drop shadow using the effects tool in the properties panel on the right. This shadow will have an opacity of 40% and be left default for the rest. Once I have put together all of the overall layout of the design, I will now create the top header part of the design. Firstly, I will need to create some text using the text tool. And for example, I will type in the name photographs for my header. Once I have done this, I will select the Roboto type text and set its size to 20. This text element will be white. Following on from this, I will need two icons, the first being a search icon. To find icons readily available in Gravit, select the media button in the toolbar and navigate to the icons option. From here, you can browse or search for icons which can be used at the click of a button. For this example, I will type search into the search bar and choose the first icon that suits me. After it has entered the design, I will change its size to be 20 by 20 and its colour to white, and then place it at the designated location. After this, I will once again find an icon, but this time one that can represent a list or navigation. Unfortunately in our library, there isn't one that exactly fits my needs. However, this one is quite close to the one I require, so I will bring this one into my design. To make changes to the icon, what I need to do is to select it, go to Modify, Path, and then Split Path. From there, all the elements in the design will be split and allow me to remove the three dots on the left. After I've done that, all I have to do is to select all three of the lines, once again go Modify, Path, and Join Paths. Now I have an icon that I can use. From here, I will change its width to 20 pixels and change it to white. Next, I will create three text elements that will be Roboto size 14. I'll create the first and call it popular and place it roughly where I need it and change its color to white. From there, I will copy and paste this design twice and call the other two recent and trends. These will be my navigation tabs for the application. After I've done this, I'll create small white rectangle that will signify the open tab and change the other two pieces of text to a light gray to signify the inactive state. When moving the text around, 
I can use the ruler at the top to space them out evenly and use the guidelines to ensure that they are aligned vertically. Next, onto the body of the design. The body of the design view will be made up of six boxes that are showcasing photos. To begin, I will create one 160 square that will be white and have a drop shadow with an opacity of 35% and a blur of six. Next up, I will duplicate this box by copy and pasting and move it in line. I'll move the boxes so they are in line vertically using the guideline snaps and move them until they are approximately 10 pixels apart from one another. After that, I'll move the boxes around together until there is around 20 pixels space at the top and 10 on either side of the boxes. After they are positioned, all that is left to do is to copy and paste both boxes together twice and move the other boxes down to about 10 pixels between and line them up horizontally using the guidelines. Once the boxing setup has been completely positioned, we will move on to adding some images into the design. The images to be added will be 160 wide by 125 pixels high and will be added to the top of each of the boxes. To do this, I'll be importing some images that I have found earlier that are currently stored in my folder on Gravit. To do this, I will use the media tool and select images. The best way to make a large image like this into the perspective you require is to firstly set the width of the image you need and change the height by the same perspective using the lock icon. From here, you should double click the image to crop and change the height to 125 as required. From here, if the area cut off by the height change is not ideal, simply move the image around while in crop mode until the result is as expected. After all of this is done, all that is left to do is to move the image to the top of the first box and align it horizontally to the box edges. I will be repeating this process for the rest of the images, however, I will skip past this repeated process. Once all of the images have been placed, the second last thing to do is to add reaction buttons to the boxes below the images. The icons I will be adding will be a heart and comment button. These are also found through the icon tool in media by once again searching and finding a suitable icon. I will be changing both of these icons to be 10 pixels wide and placed in a distributed way within the box. For the first box, I will be changing the heart to red to signify the usage of the button. Next up, some text must be added. These will signify the amount of hearts and comments for the photo. The text will be Roboto and size 10. The text will be placed next to each of the buttons and will be the same color as the icon. Once I have created the first set, I will then copy and paste the buttons and the text within each of the other boxes. Next up, I will change the second box's common button to be blue to signify the use of the element by the user. Once I have completed this, I will then continue to use the paste style tool to apply the colored buttons randomly across the design. To use paste style, copy the element with the color or style you want and then select the element that you want to set the style to and choose the edit drop down and select paste style. This is a very fast way to apply style changes across many different elements in a design. And there you have it. This is a very simplistic but stylish mobile design that shows you how Gravit allows you to create pixel perfect designs, which is very important for screen design. We at Gravit hope you have found this tutorial useful and hope you tune in to the next edition.